Earlier today, Secretary of State Antony Blinken testified before the House Foreign Affairs Committee in regards to the disastrous U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. American citizens and Afghan allies remain stranded in the Taliban-controlled country. Members of Congress are seeking answers as to why the evacuation went so wrong. Take a look. When President Biden took office in January, he inherited an agreement that his predecessor had reached with the Taliban to remove all remaining forces from Afghanistan by May 1st of this year. The previous administration pressed the Afghan government to release 5,000 Taliban prisoners, including some top war commanders. Meanwhile, it reduced our own force presence to 2,500 troops. By January 2021, the Taliban was in the strongest military position it had been in since 9-11. And we have the smallest number of troops on the ground. President Biden immediately faced the choice between ending the war or escalating it. Had he not followed through on his predecessor's commitment, attacks on our forces and those of our allies would have resumed, and the Taliban's nationwide assaults on Afghanistan's major cities would have commenced. Lots of fireworks and a whole lot more finger pointing, something we should all expect from the Biden administration. Some Republicans are going so far as to call for Biden, Vice President Harris, and, and Blinken to resign, and not without reason. Jack Posobiec is the senior editor at Human Events. He joins me now to discuss. Jack, great to have you. Buck, always a pleasure. So what are we to make of these hearings so far? I mean, we're calling for resignations, but I feel like none of us think they'll actually happen. Is this what accountability looks like, Jack? A little bit of theatrics on TV on Capitol Hill and then the people in power keep their jobs? Well, I think we're going to see a little bit more even from Blinken as the hearings continue. And remember, tomorrow he's going before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee where he's going to be faced with Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. And we know specifically with uh, if you look at the dust ups between Rand Paul and Fauci, how they've gone. This is going to be big because he is like a dog with a bone when it comes to these guys. When it comes down to it, you know, we can talk all we all we want about the Department of Defense's failures and Millie's failures, and they are many. But really it's Tony Blinken's job. It was his job to evacuate the Americans. It's his fault that there are Americans right now still behind enemy lines there in Afghanistan. It is on him the fact that he pulled, and Vanity Fair reported this, National uh, Pulse reported this, he pulled the transition crisis response plan that Pompeo had left uh, from State Department. And you've got people inside the building there, in the inside the diplomatic security services that are saying, why did you cancel that plan? Why did you get rid of this? This is specifically stood up in the wake of Benghazi so that we'd never have this situation again. Yeah, now we had that from, okay, State Department officials were able to get out, but what about everybody who's working at the embassy? And what about all these other SIVs? And how come you, he just admitted today that 60, thousand Afghan refugees came out that didn't even meet the criteria for the special immigrant visas. People were just showing up to the airport and getting on the airplane, right? And we know that this was completely unvetted. So all of this does remain on Tony Blinken's shoulders. And we know, of course, that behind the scenes, people inside Foggy Bottom, inside the State Department have lost a lot of confidence with him. And from what I hear, he's even on increasingly shaky ground with the White House itself. Representative McCall to, uh, or, or said this to Blinken today on Capitol Hill. Play it. The situation we find ourselves in is far worse in my judgment as a former chairman of Homeland Security Committee, far worse than pre-9-11. We abandoned Americans behind enemy lines. We left behind the interpreters who you, Mr. Secretary, and the president both promised to protect I can summarize this in one word, betrayal. In April, President Biden promised, quote, we will not conduct a hasty rush to the exit, and we will do it responsibly, deliberately, and safely. But that promise was broken. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of the United States Embassy in Afghanistan. That promise was also broken. Is it going to matter, Jack? Is anyone actually going to be held accountable? You think the American people will even, in the midterm elections, remember this so that the Democrats, the Biden administration, through the electoral losses they could sustain, would actually learn a lesson here? Or what do you think? Well, you know, I actually am a believer in 
the people. You know, I'm not one of those, even though I'm here in Washington, D.C., I'm not one of the folks around here that thinks that the rest of the country is just a bunch of flyover states. No, because I've been out there in middle America. I'm from Pennsylvania myself. These people are smart. They know what's going on and they don't like losing. They don't like General Patton said it in his famous speech to the Third Army right before Normandy. The Americans do not like losing. The idea of losing is hateful to an American. That's why Biden's polls went down. That's why he's pushing the vaccine stuff now. He's trying to distract from these failures. He's trying to distract from the American military under him, under his guidance, being humiliated on the world stage. Of course, China sees it. They want to backfill us in Afghanistan. And they're now talking about putting fighter jet sorties over the island of Taiwan.